Hi, welcome to another session of me just browsing and sharing the things which I think is important. If this is your first time, I'm Peter Duplessis and you're welcome. You know, I've recently been thinking about the topic of influence. In this world, we are always impressed with people of great influence, usually wealthy people, uh, sportsmen, people of great achievements, people of uh, great entrepreneurship, uh, doing things in this life. And yet, if you look at what the Lord Jesus has said, what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and yet loses his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange, to his, uh, in exchange for his soul? That is in Mark 8 verse 36. Um, it means that being successful in this world is not wrong. But unless I can balance it with a perspective on eternity, uh, it can be pretty empty. And if you look that about what Jesus said about influence, uh, we are not really to seek influence in, the, in this world as much as we have been assigned to a very specific type of influence. In Matthew 5, uh, Jesus speaks to his disciples, to his followers, and he says the following. He says, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. Now, let's think a bit uh, about that uh, first. What is salt? What does it do? Salt gives flavor, but salt also preserves against uh, corruption and decay. Now, what does it mean in, 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 in practical? Uh, you know, there's something about the, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and its effect on a person's life that speaks of the original design of God for a man, for, for a person, in such a way that it addresses the consciences of the people around you. Uh, it's, the interesting thing is, Jesus didn't say, you must be salt. He said, you are salt. So, our, our uh, goal, our purpose, our assignment, is merely the purity of that which is in us. And also the importance of not compromising on what Jesus has uh, said to us, what he demands of us, and what he has put in us. Secondly, he says this, he says, you are the light of the world. Once again, don't try and be the light, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do you light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand and it gives light to all who is in the house. Uh, this, uh, these two verses come from Matthew 5, verse 13 to 16. Now, the interesting thing here about this uh, portion about the light is that in John 8, verse 12, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Now, just think with me. Jesus says, I am the light of the world, but he also says, you are the light of the world. So what does that mean? Well, that means that when He lives within us through the Holy Spirit, we reflect Him. And what is light? Light is the perspective, God's perspective, in everyday circumstances. So we, we have to, uh, we, we are walking every day with the, these two uh, principles of influence in our environment, salt and light. To be able to, to live a, in a practical way the perspective and in the true character of our design. Not by what we say, but by, by what we are. Also what is interesting is that Jesus' warning is in here that we should not downtone on these things. For example, when it says uh, you, you do not put a lamp under a, a basket, it actually means a measuring basket. 
as if to say you cannot measure the amount of light that you are willing to give. You, you shine the light that you have and that's it. But um, if you look at in the Bible what Jesus spoke about, uh, um, about influence, he also spoke about the, the ingredients of influence. And that is interesting. In Matthew 13, verse 33, he spoke a parable. He told his disciples, he said, The kingdom of heaven is like leaven which a woman took and hid in three measures of flour until it was all leavened. Now, what does that mean? First of all, the kingdom of heaven is the ingredient, ingredient which causes the influence and determines the character of that which is to be produced in us. What is the kingdom of heaven? Well, the kingdom of heaven basically is God's authority and His rulership in my life and my willingness to yield to that. Now, also, if you look at three measures of leaven, you can say something about that, uh, the exact amount that it was in biblical times, but I think it speaks more about the fact that it speaks of the influence in the three main um, compartments of a human being's life. You know, as a human being, I am a spiritual being living in a body and expressing myself through a soul. And so I am spirit, soul and body. And I cannot um, reflect the influence of the kingdom of heaven if I haven't received the kingdom of heaven in my heart. And that is the interesting part, because it starts in the Spirit. Jesus said, if you're not born again, you cannot see the kingdom of heaven and you cannot enter the kingdom. That is in John 3. So that means that my yes to Jesus and to his message and to his character and to who he is results in God responding with giving me a new birth in my spirit which causes me to once again have eyes and ears for God. That is, and you'll recognize that when you gave your heart and your life to the Lord Jesus, there, there were things that just came alive. Suddenly, portions in the Bible which you either didn't care to understand or you simply did, couldn't understand them, or uh, they just became alive and, and, and it started speaking to you. But you see, that's the leaven of the kingdom of heaven beginning to work in us. And then we have to allow that leaven to come into our soul, into the realm of our emotions, our will, our mind, so that eventually that leaven comes out into our physical world, the lives that we live, the availability that we have in this physical body to other people and to serving God by serving other people. So eventually the nature of the influence determines the end product. But you know, uh, speaking about influence in the, in, in the language of leaven, Jesus also uh, told another parable where he actually warned against two other types of leaven. Now, you know, it's always it's, it's easy to be... Um, a low-key Christian. Uh, it takes a little bit more step to go radical, but if you go get to this where Jesus says, listen, uh, these are two types of leaven. It, 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 becomes, it may become touchy for some people, but it's there. It's in the Bible. Jesus uh, spoke to his disciples. He said, take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. Now, do you get this? First he says, the kingdom of heaven is like leaven. That's what influences us for the kingdom of heaven. And then he says, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of Herod. In other words, there are certain philosophies, certain influence which can contaminate us in such a way that the character of the kingdom of heaven cannot be shown in us. First of all, he said, what is the leaven, what is the leaven of Pharisees? Well, you can figure it out for yourself, but for me, it speaks of a system of religion where 
the system of the religion becomes more important than the personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, if, 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 if you look around you, there are people who, um, it's, it's difficult, people get so involved in, in, in doctrine and in um, activities, even church activities, uh, but unfortunately it takes the place of a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And doctrine is right, and, and activi church activities are right, and the church membership there's nothing wrong with. But all those have to be secondary to our personal relationship and the time we spend with the person of Jesus Christ. Secondly, he told about, he talked about um, uh, the leaven of Herod. Herod was the king at that stage, and what Herod says what Herod said was law. And it is in that same sense that there is a philosophy uh, that is made acceptable by the world system and uh, supported by the political system, which always aims at downtoning Christianity. Uh, it, it's, it's just the philosophy that, that criticized the gospel as either being too radical, being outdated, being politically incorrect, uh, you even hear the, the terms of hate speech in our, our times. Uh, it expects the gospel to downturn or alter its message to be acceptable in the world. Uh, it's literally the, 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 the pressure to put the gospel under a measuring bucket as to give just enough not to offend people. But you know the problem is that God hates this. Just listen what he says in Revelation 3, verse 15 to 16. He says, I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish that you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. You know, these things become very serious. Uh, it, it really challenges us with the fact that we have to make a decision on how radical am I going to be with the influence that I've been assigned to. And nobody likes to be called lukewarm, but neither does anybody like to be rejected. So this is one of the things of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. You have to accept that it's not always the most popular choice that you're going to make. Jesus said in Matthew 10 verse 22, he told his disciples, you will be hated by all for my name's sake, but he who endures to the end will be saved. He also said in, in Luke 9 verse 23 to 25, he said, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and is himself destroyed or lost? So, yes, we are assigned to influence. That was part of the package deal. Uh, but it also requires a maintenance of us in the sense that we have to value spiritual investment more than personal comfort. And to be willing to be instruments of change more than being accepted uh, by everybody. Uh, it's a perspective that, that, that we hold of holding on to a biblical uh, perspective of the reality of eternity for ourselves and for the people around us and not yielding to the philosophy of this world which uh, demands us to, to go soft on those things. So, yes, there's, a, there's really a need in this world for people to stand out. There's a need for salt. There's a need for light now as never before. And I don't think that we can afford to take a position of self-defense in these things. We need to take a position of the vision of transformation. Because that is what God has given us. That is what he has assigned us. 
If we allow the leaven of the kingdom of heaven to transform us, we will be the light and the salt which has, holds the potential of transforming our environment and other people. If we are ever allowed the leaven of this world and the philosophy of this world to influence us, we, became, uh, we become the, 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 the light under a uh, measuring bucket and the salt that is, that is worthless. And then we really lose the edge of what Jesus Christ has designed for us to be in this world. So I, um, I really want to challenge you that we, uh, that we take our assignment seriously. Uh, that we value the approval of the Lord Jesus higher than the approval of uh, anybody else. So... God bless you and uh, may you really shine your light and be the salt that you've designed to be.